Hello everyone and welcome back to DNQ Football, where today we are joined by, well I say, the captain of the Cook Islands. The Cook Islands have played one match in seven years, but Ben Marta did captain them in that game. A 2-0 defeat to the Solomon Islands, but a very, very good performance from the Cook Islands in that game. Ben, thank you so much for putting some time aside to come chat to us today. Yeah, no, thanks for having me. Thanks for having me, excited to be here. I mean, where to begin? Obviously, this is going to be all around kind of that that, that one game, that that bizarre experience, I'm sure, for you in, in Doha. But firstly, just as a bit of background, obviously, you, you're you currently in New Zealand. You play club football in New Zealand. I believe your brother's yep. been capped for New Zealand. How did yep. the opportunity come about for you to represent the Cook Islands? So my dad's from the Cook Islands um, right. and that side of the family, so... My brother does as well, but we've always had the eligibility mm -hmm. and um, sort of, you know, things uh, ended up working out and this trip to Doha came up. Um, I'd been looking to play for the Cook Islands for a couple of years now, but yeah, as you mentioned, they haven't played for seven years, so it's been a long time coming, but it was, it was really cool to finally be able to wear that shirt. And when did you, you kind of touched on it then, Ben, when did you make that kind of final call as to, you know what I am? I'm going to represent um, the, the Cook Islands. Was it was it just before the, the World Cup qualifiers or was it something so, that you'd had kind of, oh, I'd like to do that for, for a good yeah. good few years? I mean, it's it's always been on my mind, obviously. Like, it's it's something I'm very proud of, that side of my heritage. And um, it actually happened. Uh, I stopped playing football for a few years and as I started getting back into it, um, my old high school coach, Kevin Fallon, um, he's quite a prestigious coach here in New Zealand, and I love playing for him. Uh, he ended up taking the Cook Islands job for a period of time and oh, just really? sort of said, yeah, just sort of said, uh, would you like to come along? And uh, oh, you've got Cook Island blood. I said yes, and then the rest was history. Brilliant. I love it. And then, obviously, it's, it's not just a call-up that you get to the Cook Islands. It's, it's a call-up to the Cook Islands playing in Doha in this kind of weird Oceania qualifiers obviously because of everything that happened with Covid when you did get that yeah. call up what was what was your reaction and what did it mean to you and the family um it was it was sort of half talked about for uh you know about the last 12 months so I, I had a rough idea that you know it could be going ahead and so by the time the call up had come around I had sort of uh I think processed most of, of, of what that felt like, but I think the big the big thing for me was just uh, just actually playing in that game. That was a bit of a moment standing there at the national anthem where I was a bit like, Wow, this is this is a pretty cool moment and I wanna do it again, you know, pretty soon. <laughs> the like when whenever we um chat to players that, that play for, for smaller international um nations but we're always really interested to kind of know what to be honest to know what everything around it's like so yeah and really interested to know what is the pre what was like the pre-tournament or what is like a pre-tournament preparation like for, right. for such a for such a minnow nation like the cook islands can you give us a bit of insight like do you, do you have like a yeah. training camp that lasts three or four days you know i was reading yeah. press that you you know the players didn't really know each other how does it all yeah so um, it, it, I think it's quite a unique situation with Cook Islands team. Um, there was probably just over half the squad from the Cook Islands themselves or currently living there. And then we were made up of, I think, uh, probably three New Zealanders and three Aussies. And there's one boy living in the UK now. So it's, uh, it's, it's been a little bit stretched, but obviously with, uh, COVID regulations as well as we're not one of the bigger nations so mm. uh, you know having those pre-tournaments in Aussie like a few of the teams did or or in, uh, yeah. in Tahiti or wherever that may be we we literally met each other as some of us at the Auckland airport as we were flying <laughs> over um, and uh, had our first session six days before we played and Jesus you know we, we did what we could it, w it wasn't ideal but it you know what can you do you can only yeah, play with, yeah. with what you've got yeah for sure for sure and i dare say kind of the, the pandemic and, and everything just around it hasn't helped that so what, what was yeah. that session what's that session like it must be so weird you know you've got this world cup qualifier in 
um, in six days' time, and, and the first thing you're doing yeah. is you're, walk, you're walking around introducing yourself to half the team. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm the captain. <laughs> <laughs> through, through, through mutual players, like, uh, m- mainly everyone had played with someone, you know? And then okay, also, okay. I think, I think it's, more, it's island culture, but especially uh, Cook Island's culture, they, they're just very welcoming people, you know? And when we all sort of understood we were from the same place, we're here for the same thing, it was... It was really no problem. By the time we touched down in Doha with flying and in transit, everyone was, you know, was good mates with one another. So by the yeah. time we got into the training field, it was it was time to get to work, really. Nice. But we understood we had such short preparation, uh, but we had to do the best with what we had. Yeah. And, and at that point, you, you, you know, you think you're going to almost, you're going to play that full, that full round of fixtures. So, yeah. so you, you've kind of got that, you're looking ahead to, to that, those those three games. Yeah. The approach to it, was it always going to be let's get let's get a solid defensive shape and, and sort of see and see what we can do? Um just just, just I am just almost trying to get my head around kind of you guys have come together yeah. six days. Like what's what's the gaffer saying when you're at training? What is the what um, are the sessions? Is it getting organized yeah. and getting a, a team unit um and, and yes. shape and shape ready? Yeah, so the first session was actually just a bit of a blowout. We didn't really touch any of the tactical side. But yeah, with, with the remaining five days we sort of had, um, we weren't in a position position really to take rest days. Yeah. So we were, were quite often training on sore bodies, but we needed to do it. And um, yeah, you're dead right. That, that defensive shape was essentially what we, what we spent our training doing. Um, we understood the Solomons were probably going to be our hardest game in mm. the group. Um, mm. And we also understood uh, if we're leaking five, six goals a game, we're probably not going to get results. So we understood what was important, I think. And um, a big credit to the group and, and the coach for recognising that, I think. Um, and as, it was a bit of a shame to uh, see potentially how much we could have grown within three games. I could yeah. sound silly, but we met yeah. each other six days earlier, you know. So only time will tell. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was. It's kind of. It, what's What's funny is kind of on on retrospect now. If you go to if you go to like the Cook Islands football team's Wikipedia page, the squad list is literally one cap, one cap, zero cap, zero caps, one cap, one cap, and it's just it, it it's mad, really. What What was it like being given the captaincy of that side? Did you feel kind of pressure, or was there a, a kind of an honour that you felt alongside it? It was more honour than pressure, I think. Um... I sort of regard myself as as a leader, um, and nice. being able to have that armband for my first game, and with a lot of us being our first sort of second games in a new team, and sort of be accepted by the boys was was probably the most important thing mm. for me, to be honest. We we've got a, a group of older players, so we sort of have a few leaders in the team, which worked out quite well. I don't think you can have like a captain that that does everything. Um, so we had a, a good a good leadership base in the team, which sort of made my job a bit easier, I guess, to to not feel the pressure, because there shouldn't be any pressure as a captain. You've you've been given it for a reason, so you just have to do your best to do what you do. And when your teammates can let you do that, it's uh, it's good it's good for everyone, you know. Yeah, yeah. No, I I, I can imagine. So so let's kind of you're there as we as we spoke, and we were gonna ask you about kind of the experience of, of jetting off to Doha you've touched on that 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 mm-hmm. first and only game that comes around that you've that you've sort of alluded to um yeah. you've done your prep um you, you keep things tight that that 2-0 loss to the Solomon Islands a side that as we know ended up getting to to the final and had a, and a really impressive yeah. tournament talk us through kind of before before the game itself talk us through like mm-hmm. that match match day experience okay like, best arena you've um, ever played in like this 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 occasion must have felt now on on looking back as it was the only one game that you had that must feel just now that must have been so special yeah i mean looking back on it uh sort of thinking through what actually happened in the day it it sort of only came in hindsight where i realized like wow this is this is a pretty cool experience like fifa yeah. do the whole thing and everything's planned by the minute but i mean when you're when you're in game day, it's like you've got a game to play. You just, you know, you're you're not you're not worried and sort of absorbing how cool the stadium is, or sure, you know sure. what it feels like to play in TV. Like it's you're playing a game that you want to get a result from, and that's all that should matter. And that's all that did matter. 
but I mean, the whole experience from <laughs> it was just a mad, mad experience, really. Yeah. I can't even put it in words to be honest with going there, having only played one game, and then it was it was a bit mad, but um, I'm happy it happened. We just I look forward to hopefully playing some more games soon. And I mean, you know, that that game itself, you're up against the second best team in in the whole region. That was the case before yeah. the tournament, and the tournament only went to sort of prove that. I I was actually there. Um, I, I watched the game live, and it didn't it didn't look like the second best team versus an unranked nation that had never played together. Mm -hmm. it, it looked like a better footballing side against certainly a defensive team, but but a two 0 yeah. defeat was. It, even that was was borderline harsh. You know, it, it was a really good, yeah. solid effort. Like, what was the what was it actually like in mm -hmm. that game down on that pitch? So, so, in hindsight, looking at like the score, uh, two nil result against the Solomon Islands. Mm. Um, I can't say I've ever been happy with a loss ever in my life, but I certainly wasn't crying myself to sleep over the result. Uh, the game itself was very, very tough. The Sodman yeah. Islands, I think, on the field, why they were the second best in the in the um, Oceania, sorry. Mm. They technically, physically, um, even tactically, they were very, very good. Um, they played together for a long time, and you could yeah. tell. Uh, I think it was a, a lot of grit, determination, and sort of just, uh, belief in the way we wanted to play that sort of kept us in that game. Mm -hmm. We had mm. a couple chances. We had two set pieces and yes. looked yeah, yeah. Uh, dangerous of both. But I think if you look at the game, uh, the Solomon Islands wins wins that game pretty consistently. I think they they played very well. How Ben? Just very quickly. How rapid are they? Because they look fast when you watch them on TV. How oh. rapid are they? They they just they've just got pace to okay. burn these guys. Well, uh, the benefit of playing in a low block is you don't have to sprint <laughs> after them 40 yeah, metres in behind. Yeah, yeah, true. I, <laughs> I can recall one time in the uh, late in the second half when sort of we were 2-0 down, um, the game was sort of stagnating and uh, I think the phrase was, let's just throw the kitchen sink at them, you know? Let's press <laughs> everything, let's get up, let's see what happens. We pressed our back line up to halfway quickly once and they went straight back in behind yeah. and nearly scored. So we didn't do that again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was funny. Tom, you were telling me after the in the in the um, post match press conference, Ben, mm. the Solomon Islands manager. He was fuming. Um, he was he was fuming, wasn't he, you were saying? He was I bet he, he was. was. <laughs> he was fuming. He was said oh I remember because me and Tom spoke about it after Ben. And I was laughing because yeah. Tom said to me he went, the Solomon Islands manager was absolutely raging. At one point, he just turned around and he went, I have never seen this before. Um, a team that is losing, but they're still time-wasting. <laughs> and I, we were just, we were just, we were just laughing, weren't we? It was just... Well, I mean, I personally, the, the, this whole channel is like for the underdog. And even though the Solomon Islands aren't like the biggest footballing nation, I loved it as a performance. I, from the Cook Islands, yeah. I, you know, nobody knew what to expect. And I don't think you honestly could have done that much better in, in that game, to be fair. And then for the mm -hmm. Solomon Islands, the Solomon Islands manager, again, they should be pretty comfy with a 2 0 win. But for him to be so, so angry and, and disappointed by the result, I think that just shows how good how good the tactics were and how well the team kind yeah. of. Yeah, bang on. Kind of bang on. For me, it's, uh, that, that's a compliment, you yeah. know? Like, yeah. Yeah. Why, why is the head coach of the second best team in Oceania worried about little old Cook yeah, I yeah. think that's a. It's a great compliment to, to the boys and uh, the tactical plan we had. Like, mm. of course, it's not pretty, but football's not pretty sometimes, especially in yeah. games where you have to get results. You know, we understood it was probably going to be very difficult and we put ourselves in the best position to get a result. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't. But to be honest, if I had to play the game over, I don't know what different yeah. we would do. Yeah. I mean, after after that game, there was obviously due to be the second game in the group, Tahiti Vanuatu, mm -hmm. that was called off because of because of COVID, and yeah. then it was it was a bit of a confusing time for the next couple of days, being unsure what was what was going to happen, and then obviously, yeah. sadly, it spread to the Cook Islands team, and, mm -hmm. and you weren't able to then complete the next couple of couple of games. What? 
what was the feeling in the camp when those COVID cases started to come through? Was it just utter disappointment? We were gutted. Yeah. We were we were absolutely gutted. We came, came together as a group um, and our sort of aim and focus, which by the way, we've we've not sort of dropped, we've, we've kept as a group is we no longer want to be the Cook Islands, a team that just shows up to tournaments to take part. We want to be uh, a team that comes and if you don't play well or if you aren't up for it, we'll be up for it and we're going to take points. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, that's not going to happen overnight. It comes with, um, I think, uh, more games is very important to getting us there. Um, I think probably uh, there, there's a lot of Cook Islands footballers and, and there. Um, already since coming back, there's a young goalkeeper playing in the top league in Wellington who I played against last week and actually who's got Cook Island descent and I thought he was fantastic for a 16 year old so you know there's, there's players out there and sort of just expanding um, uh, the depth of our squad will help mm -hmm. a lot and just playing those games but yeah we went there with the mentality of we, we don't want to be those guys anymore so when we couldn't sort of go out there and better our 2-0 performance 2-0 loss it was uh, yeah. it, it was a bit tough yeah, yeah. I, I think it's especially tough, isn't it, given that the region plays so few games. You know, I, I yeah. think, you, you know, obviously the, the Cook Islands hadn't played since the last lot of World Cup qualifiers. Some of the teams mm -hmm. have played in Pacific games, but there's still there's still not many games in that, if if any, for, you know, the full national team. So it's, mm -hmm. it's difficult, but, you know, it would have been really interesting to see Cook Islands versus Tahiti. And obviously, you know, there is no available kind of information on how that Vanuatu game would have gone because they didn't get to play at all yeah. despite going out there. But, yeah. but it would have certainly been interesting seeing seeing against Tahiti that are certainly not a bad side. But, but like you say, I think the Cook Islands, I think some people were expecting a heavy, heavy defeat and, and kind of the mm -hmm. results that we've seen from the Cook Islands in the past. So to make that step, on the biggest stage that the Cook Islands have ever really played on is yeah. is going to be so good, hopefully, you know, for that representation and for, for kind of the young kids to look at and go, OK, yeah, I can represent the Cook Islands here, you know, if I've got that heritage as well. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, the only thing I would say to that is anyone can do it once, yeah. you know. Yeah. I think that our test now is uh, whenever our next game is, whenever our next tournament is, uh, we have to perform again. And it's going to be a very difficult climb, but that's the way it has to be. It has to be game by game. And we have to just, I think, slowly start gaining some respect and um, hopefully start th those results start going our way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. I love that mentality. I, I guess like the, the next the next big question for for kind of you, and I guess the, the whole region actually, Ben, is 48 team World Cup coming soon. Oceania is going from the 0.5 of a space to 1.5 spaces if 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 i think i don't think yeah. i'm not sure if that's actually has that been officially confirmed i believe it has now mm -hmm. yeah a whole extra space so from a, a player's mm -hmm. perspective for how does that change the outlook from the other nations if that makes sense so if we kind of speak um, hypothetically you've got new zealand yeah. who 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 are going to be the favorite for that that actual that whole spot but then for the rest of the teams an opportunity to get to strive for an inter-confederational kind of playoff spot. Um, how does how has that kind of changed thinking in the region towards international football or, or kind of, or has it? I don't know if, if change of thinking is the way to put it. I think okay. it's more you will find in the games. It's hard to say. So I, I would like to say something like uh, perhaps there's more desire with a, a real knowledge um, that you may be playing at a World Cup, you know, if, yeah. you, if you do the right things and you win, win certain games. Mm. But then again, I don't think there's a lack of it now. There is a New Zealand, uh, by far and away, the best. And yeah, I think it's safe to say that. Um, they've got a fantastic team, fantastic depth, most of them playing pro. Mm -hmm. um, but I know for a fact when teams play them from the islands, they are. Uh, that's the biggest game of their life and they know if they get a result it's it's going to change you know what i mean yeah so it's, yeah 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 from, Makes that, sense. from that aspect the there's never been a lack of belief it's not like they're showing up to games oh no we're playing against new zealand we're going to get spanked like mm. even in doha you could see that mm. uh every team that played against new zealand given that new zealand yeah. did show why they were the best 
they threw everything they had at them everything they had so um yeah from from that aspect i don't think it'll change but maybe uh um more enticing for overseas players with eligibility for island nations to come and yeah, play possibly that's interesting, that's interesting. That, that makes sense to me um but yeah that's that's sort of how i see it yeah no it will it'll be so it'll be so interesting to see to see how it plays out particularly for oceania but other, other regions as well um as as a channel we tell my, as we adore the the kind of the smaller nations any opportunities yeah. for them to kind of progress as part of world cup qualification mm -hmm. is, is always something mm -hmm. that, we, that we like to keep an eye on just, just looking ahead then you've kind of touched on it a little bit ben about kind of next fixtures kind of lack of fixtures the, the <laughs> region is the region's well known for not for, for for very limited international fixtures and 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 yes. the pandemic obviously hasn't helped that when can we expect to see the cook islands back in action again i wish i had that answer for you um <laughs> it's uh, it, it's yeah, sort of right. something that us as players we we fed back to management um the same things i'm telling you there the importance of we made a great first step but needing to build on this and that means games um yeah you know we're, we're we're banging on the doors but at the end of the day i'm just a player i don't know what goes into that um i imagine there's a reason there aren't many games played mm. um i imagine it's not cheap there, mm. there there's a lot of factors that have to come sure. into play that um i don't know about and i understand that as a player but you know being selfish and if if we want to to grow our team and uh grow the sort of reputation of cook islands football we have to be playing games that's that's the reality we shall see we, we shall see, shall see. we wait with, yes, we with bated breath tom we wait with bated breath yes well the cook <laughs> islands now 190 in the fifa world rankings after thankfully managing to play that one game thankfully that the trip wasn't for nothing and the experience will will obviously stay with yourself ben and, and the players forever mm -hmm. so uh the last thing from us is just to say thank you for giving up your giving up your evening to come and come and speak to us. We really appreciate it. And uh, and yeah, to everyone watching, um, this has been DNQ's interview with the one man to captain the Cook Islands since 2015. Uh, and and I, I genuinely, it's been it's been really interesting, Ben, to chat through kind of the mentality going into the games and and what the future might hold for the Cook Islands. So really appreciate your time. Yeah, no, I appreciate you guys having me. Uh, it's it's been awesome. I was. It was quite cool to talk about Cook Islands football. I feel like uh, we should talk about it a bit more. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And there is there is genuinely, you know, uh, when we were doing our stuff um, throughout the tournament, there is genuinely a sort of a weird mini fan base for the Cook Islands across across the rest of the world as people, you know, the real underdogs in, in that group. So yeah. I think everyone will be really, really interested to, to see this and, and to see the kind of mentality for the Cook Islands progressing. It's, it's really cool mm -hmm. to see. Anything else from you, Ryan? Nothing at all. Thanks so much, Ben. And uh, we'll we'll stay in touch. We'll we'll want to know when when the next round of fixtures are coming up, and uh, we'll be yeah. keeping uh, we'll be keeping our eyes. Tell you what, as soon as I know, I'll flick you a message on Twitter. That sounds great. <laughs> yeah, that do. sounds great. Thank you, mate. To everyone Congrats. watching, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment on this. Check us out on Instagram, Twitter, and everything else that exists. We'll see you next time.